Welcome back. It was a wonderful holiday. Yeah. I haven't seen you in a while. I know. It's been nice, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say nice to see you. <laughs> You're so mean to me. I, I my, really, I my really feelings. actually, listen, I did miss you. I miss you a lot. Uh, here's the reason why. Because I like podcasting with you. But when I'm not with you, I feel dumb. <laughs> I do. I, I hang out with, you know, 11 and 12 year olds. That should make you feel smart. I, I don't. <laughs> That's the problem. They read better than I do. The only thing I can do better than they can is um, I can I can lift things that are heavy. And I can build things. That's pretty much it. That's all I got. That's my repertoire. You can reach the top shelf mm-hmm. without a I stool. Can. I hit my head on every doorway. So how was your holiday? Let's do this really quick. How, what, what did you do for New Year's? Did you fall asleep at 9.30 like I did? I, uh, yes, I did. <laughs> 10. <laughs> that I makes think. me feel better. I, I am 51, and you are 38? 30, I'm 47. 40, you're 47? Are you really? I am. God, that doesn't feel right. So we uh, we are back. I turned 47, actually, just during the break. Wait, when during was your birthday? Uh, in December. December what? 29th. Oh, wow. Happy birthday. Thanks, man. Mm-hmm. You don't look a day over 46. Nah. So, uh, so I, I texted you this morning. Yes. Because I read the paper. <laughs> Let me get that. Let me let me rephrase that. <laughs> you looked at the okay. headline. On the- I read the headline and I got about. I think I was two paragraphs in. No, did I get the th- the third paragraph? I don't think you did. I got to the salaries and that article <laughs> about the new interim you, you, superintendent. You got to the stipend. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right. I, I just texted you immediately. I'm like, we yo, we need a podcast. And you said, yep, let's do it. Yep, let's go at one thirty. And. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is, five o'clock in the afternoon, and we are podcasting. But I, I'll take it. I'll take what I can get. Rich business owners like yourself, right? Um, they don't. They don't make money by sitting on their ass. You know, I I thought that my private jet was going to land at eleven, <laughs> and I'd make it over here by yeah. one thirty. But you I was took, I was delayed. You, you in retrospect, you should have taken the helicopter, <laughs> right? Right. I get it. I needed a couple more rounds at, at the bar before I could <laughs> Your own step bar, away. that is. Yeah. No, dry January. I'm working on... Are you doing that? Are you doing the dry January? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so far. <laughs> that will not happen with me. I will not I will not do a dry uh, any month, but I will certainly... I'll do the Obama thing. Obama, when he, when he got into president, Yeah, I read his book. I had his book read to me. <laughs> he, uh, when he got into the presidency, he said, I'm not going to drink during the week. He's oh, not going to okay. have a single drink during the week because he wanted to be fresh when he was making decisions. If something happened, he didn't want to have a few you know, beverages in him, which made me think, how many presidents were hammered when they were making decisions? Right? Uh, but but he was, I guess he stuck to it and he felt better and he, he tried to quit uh, smoking and that didn't work and I don't smoke, so I'm one up on him. Yeah, you got to have your vices. Mm-hmm. The uh, There's actually lengthy history of drinking like in Congress. Yeah. Back like founding fathers that like, yeah, they were they were liquored right up all, I, all the time because they, yeah. they they probably had and I I wonder if that's you always see in TV shows you always see a liquor cabinet in the back background when they're they're meeting with their constituents yeah there's always a like some sort of liquor cabinet right, they drink like all the time yeah I don't I couldn't do that anytime I watch TV it makes me want to have a drink see, all I those know. shows yeah. I I try to control myself and only drink on the days that end in Y yeah that's smart so. Yeah. Um, so far th- in 2023, I have not yet had a beverage. That's right. And you're drinking a water right now. Yeah, so I'm proud of you. We'll see. All right. So so make me smarter, as you usually do. I've been trying for so long. It takes a no, while. To no avail. But. It takes a long time. But I feel like I got pissed off at that article today. I, I, I mean, I, I, I say pissed off, tongue in cheek. But I, I feel like I, I called this thing a long time ago. And I don't know if I verbalized it, but I feel like everything that's happening right now, I was like, I told you so. The, I, I, see definitely... it, I see it. The writing was on the wall. And I think I actually said that, you know, Abdullahi was going to get into that position, even though blah, blah, blah. So tell me what's going on. What, what, uh, what's, what's happening? Make sense of that article for me. Okay. So we really kind of have to make sense of, of two pieces of information, I think. You have the the press herald article which has some information in it w- that becomes in addition to uh a letter that was sent out by school board chair lentz okay uh, sarah lentz basically announcing that okay javier is leaving we have two uh, currently we have two assistant superintendents 
Okay. They're going to become interim co-superintendents. Okay. So two people are going to do the job of one. Um, you can make so many comments about so that. that, that <laughs> that's, that's my first comment, right. but we'll get into that. Well, a you could argue that it's a two-person job. I mean, the first, the the former yeah. one person he couldn't sh- get the job yeah. done. He, he so shit the bed. Maybe yeah. it was a bigger job than, yeah. than one person yeah. can handle. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but, it, it, I mean, in all seriousness, so you had Javier Botana, superintendent, and below him, two assistant superintendents, Malia Nally and Aaron Townsend. Okay. Yeah. So those two assistant superintendents are going to share now the responsibility of getting the district to the, we'll say, the finish line of the, right. the 2023 school year. Right. Um, they need to come up with the budget for the 23-24 school year yeah. for, ne- for next year. To be um, shot down. Yeah. Yeah, I still, I still, I don't think I'm on board with that philosophy. But to, we can get back to that later. Sorry. Um, so they're, they've got to get, they've got to run schools through the spring, mm-hmm. get ready for next year. Okay. On top of that, they have to fix the still chaotic mess yeah. of the payroll debacle. That I, I, the last I heard, people still aren't getting paid accurately, and we haven't even scratched the surface of some of the retirement problems. Yeah, I mean, there's 403Bs, right. 401Ks, there's main PERS, there's a, all the interest and all the fees and blah, blah, blah. God, I can't I can't imagine. There's a third party doing that now, right? That's the that's what I've been hearing. Yeah, um, so they've got, uh, we have an outside group that's looking into that. We've got somebody from Tyler Technologies that I think depending on the t- where we are in the timeline, is working full-time trying to rectify the payroll system. Yep. I don't know if that means they're working on getting it working forward or if they're trying their part of unraveling the layers and, and looking backwards, but mm-hmm. y- you have all of this mess with the payroll, but you still have the operation of, of going forward with right. the schools. Um, even just the day-to-day operations, never mind kind of envisioning where do we want to go like what, what's the, the mm-hmm. path forward for our schools given the current climate of yeah. you know whatever wh- whatever's going on out there so you ha- so townsend and nally are going to step up and be co uh superintendents i will point out that i think it many times throughout our teaching careers there was one superintendent and one assistant superintendent yep so a lot of this, how many people does it take to do it, is totally semantic because you really, and I've been saying this for years, how many people total work as uh, central office leadership right. is the question. Because you could have one assistant, uh, sorry, you could have one superintendent and you could have no assistant superintendents, but you could have the head of this, the head of that, the right, director, the director of, this, of this, the director, and director of that. Of, yeah. And yep. so... Um, you know, somebody's in charge of special ed, somebody's in charge of transportation, somebody's in charge of food services, somebody's in charge of maintenance. There's all of these different components. All of those people are supposed to be working together to kind of keep things running smoothly. So if one of these superintendents, in theory, is kind of in charge of that, we'll just call it pool of chores. Right. And then the other superintendent is focused on maybe like budget and more curriculum and working with the principals or something like that. Yep. You, you, you can kind of divide and conquer the labor, but <laughs> they, they need more help than that. So um, in addition, Abdullahi Ahmed, who yeah. is the current principal at Deering High School, yep. former colleague of, of both of ours, yep. is going to assume a role of interim assistant superintendent. But according to the paper, will still have some involvement with Deering High School. Okay. Does, so, does that answer your question in a roundabout uh, I mean, way? It's, um, I, I've always, I've long thought that if you put the right person in that job or in any job, you can cut out some fat, right? You put the right people in place. They're efficient in what they're doing. They have a goal. They're able to triage the stuff that doesn't really matter and focus on what really does matter. I feel like we've been stuck with Javier 
putting his hands into things that really don't fucking matter, that don't really pertain to all kids. And I think, anyway, long and short of it is, I feel like now we have a superintendent that we're still going to be paying for because they agreed to step down. I don't know if that's, this is what I feel like. That, I'm not sure if that's true. I, I will say one, one <clears throat> of the biggest questions that I have about all of this, mm-hmm. it, and it, I've had it for quite some time, what is Javier Botana's um, financial package as he leaves? His exit plan, yeah. It, and, and, it, I, and I mean this for a couple of different reasons. First off, he had a contract for two years. Right. He's leaving after one year. So I wanted to know what was going to happen with that whole second year of of pay. Is that, that as include... part of that contract? I don't know. But now he's not even finishing the year he said that right. he's he a year was and going a half to do. short, right? So, so yeah. right, he is a year and a half short of uh, the written contract. Is there a buyout clause to that contract? Or... Did he just, I mean, you stopped teaching at a mid-year point. They didn't pay you for the rest no. of the year. Nope. Nope. I stopped teaching at the end of, it, it was June. Yeah. Like, I finished the school year. They take our salaries and they pay us through the summer. Yeah. So, I, I got paid that full year. Right. I left all of my um, sub days that I never used in the, the sub bank. And right. they mysteriously, like, poof. Like, there's no buyouts for... For those of us who just walk away at the conclusion of our contract, it, it, it to me seems that, like it would be pretty sad if a person who is so determined to to help the public would take a large sum of money out of the public coffers uh, yeah. walking away. If I'm if I'm doing my math right, which a lot of times I do it right, Eli. It's the one thing in life that I can do. I right. tend to defer to you. You're the math guy. It's it's going to be at the tune of if we pay him for a year and a half more while we're paying somebody else or two people, maybe three people, it's about $250,000. It's a quarter million dollars of salary, including all of the, the other stuff that goes on. I, I added 25% for the other stuff, retirement and insurance and blah, blah, blah. It might even be right. more than that. Now, if he's leaving some of that on the table because he said, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm right. walking away, so be it. Right. And I, I, I would love to know that answer because he, he works for the public, and I think as a public servant, like things like that are supposed to be right. public knowledge. Yeah, I never leave a job without having another job, right? I So if he's leaving... And he doesn't have another job. It makes me think that he's getting paid f- through that <clears throat> contract. Anyway, my, the, my point was, we now have we're now paying four people to do what I consider to be a two person job, which, if again, if I did my <coughs> math right, you're talking about over a year and a half because they're not going to hire a superintendent. I, I well, can't so- imagine they're going to have a su- superintendent in place by the beginning of this this year. Do you see that happening? Wait, y- the fall of 2023. Yeah. Uh, they they will have a superintendent in place by the fall of 2023. Okay. Whether it's Townsend, Nally, uh, or, or somebody else? Or next, that- next school year, fall of 2023, the current superintendent search committee will have... Th- their job is to have a superintendent in place for... Right. But I know who's on year. that. I know who's on that. <laughs> anyway. Do, well, do you? <laughs> uh, you're right. I, I heard a fucking rumor. This is totally 100% rumor, and I don't even know if I should say it, but I would not put it past her, but I heard that... Um, uh, what's her face there? Finger. Uh, Fig door. Fig door. Um, she stepped down from being co-chair of the... Uh, but I heard, her, I heard a rumor that potentially her daughter is on the, the, the committee now. I don't I even confirmed that because I, I kind of stepped away from all this. But anyway, anyway, that's a long short. So the, the, what, I'm, what, what I'm getting at is you've got all these directors. You've got all these teacher leaders that are getting paid, that are working at central office, that I don't have direct contact with the kids. And now you've got four people doing two people's jobs. It seems like there's a shitload of fat. So I'm, I'm coming back to the, that school budget thing. It, how much... How much are we going to believe that school budget if we get all that fat in there I, uh, just I, in those four positions? I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, there's a there's a gentleman working at central office who um, both professionally uh, and personally, I, I respect him. I don't know him really well personally, but um, his name's Terry Young. He is he was the principal at 
Longfellow uh -huh. for many years. Um, two uh, sons who are contemporaries of my kids, like went through the public schools together, and um, you know he's great parent, great um, great principal. I think when he was at Longfellow. He left Longfellow last year and took a job at Central Office, and it's a it's a director of something. He's like the manager of operations now. Maybe they folded transportation and something else mm -hmm. into one job, and he's overseeing both of those. But there are a lot of directors, and there's a lot of people that do not work in the classroom and do not work with students. And are they necessary? The big question is: Are they necessary? Can can more than can more jobs be combined into one person's? Uh, anyway, no, I, I I think that that's a, I think that that's an extremely important question for all of us as taxpayers right. to ask. And I'd like to know of the one hundred thirty three million dollar one hundred thirty three point one million dollar budget, like break that out. And show that in a pie chart. And I'd like to see, you know, teachers as a wedge, ed techs as a wedge, administrators as a wedge. But then you have, um, like, custodial staff. You've got right. transportation. You've got um, food services. But I want to know how many people essentially work for a central office. Right. Because I do think that we have a lot of directors and advisors and dean of or, what you know, whatever. Um and, and we have this huge, huge special education um, division. Um, the, there's there's essentially schools within schools, I think, these programs called uh, Beach and, and yeah. Breathe. Breathe, yeah. And they're designed to help students with um, extreme, like, um, socio-emotional um, challenges. Uh, behavioral are on, challenges. Behavioral so. challenges, yep. students are, yep. that are on the spectrum. And God love them, I, like the people doing that work, and the should those, be the highest paid employees in the district. And and the yep. the students that are are getting those services certainly need them. And you know, we've you and I have both have had the, some of those students in our classes over the years, which they, they present significant challenges for their families, the and the schools as to how do we create a structure where they can yep. thrive, yep, um, where they can be supported and. It's really, really hard to do, but are we doing it in a way that's effective, that's efficient, that mm -hmm. that, that works? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we spend a lot of money at central office, and it, the easiest thing in the world to do uh, is, as a leader, to like surround yourself with more people to help you do the work. Mm -hmm. And and it somewhat is, uh, I think, a natural tendency to kind of be like. The weight of this job, I need, I need some help. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And you want someone that you can talk with and that you can bounce ideas off of. So th there's this natural gravity towards adding positions around the people who are making decisions. The decision makers get to support themselves. The people doing the work in the fields, are, you know, the the teachers in the classrooms are the ones that are the least supported. Yeah, I think the uh, right. That's that's a great point because how many times were you in a classroom? Where you had, I, I can remember you actually co-taught with me one one semester, where we had if you went down uh, the infinite campus list, which is where all the students' names are listed, and then all of their either disabilities or their five hundred four plan or whatever to help us learn how to teach them. I had one class that had twenty eight kids in it, and more than three quarters of the kids had some sort of five hundred four IEP behavioral, you know, the, all kinds of different tags next to their name ell and they had you know, right didn't speak english and right and those kids those kids were taught by just me and then you came in because you just happened to be we able could, to inside we could that work team. our like our schedules right. so that i could come in and spend it was some just time lucky. in your classroom yeah. and then we had one person that was helping all of the ninth graders in the building yeah who were 200 who kids are, who are identified as special ed it, it, he can't be with all of them at once he he, he like Right. So, and that, that year he had like 45 kids on his caseload. And you're, I think the, the max really should be around 20 for, for any one person. Right, and then right? you layer in the, the ELL challenges. Like this is the stuff that you yeah. and I have been talking about yeah. since we started podcasting together is there's not enough boots yeah. on the ground doing the actual work. Meanwhile, you get two principals at Deering. And you've got two superintendents now, really three superintendents now. And, uh, and, and we're not doing any better. 
Uh, there was one comment in the paper. Did you did you read that comment? I can't I can't remember who said it, but there was a there was a citizen that read the article and said, kind of gave some uh, argument as to why this is a bad choice to have these two people take over the super the superintendency. Was it was it the one that basically kind of articulated the current incompetence yes. of our district? Yeah. Yes. So you had a director of management who is uh, Townsend, right? He managed the buildings, which means that he was... And, and like the principals. Yeah, the principals and the assistant principals. Right. And he was basically saying that... So basically there were like 16 departures in the in the past calendar year. Yeah, and you had, you know, kids were feeling threatened and they led to, you know, I, I don't want to call them riots, but protests that turned into something else. And then you had, you know, Malia, who I like a lot. I, I, I did a lot of work with Malia Nally, who I, I think is an awesome person. Um, but numbers speak for themselves if you're the director of or the assistant superintendent in charge of teaching and learning and our test scores aren't going you know up and right <laughs> you know a, a positive trend we're, right we're lagging who's who's to blame there and with all due respect to abdullahi uh dr ahmed who awesome I, dude I, I i awesome guy i yeah. i bump into him often and just like in the neighborhood and we'll, yep. we'll, we'll be talking yep great great person one of the kindest humans i know done one of the wonderful like things the, for the, the community yeah big community outreach uh bridge builder etc um what like i'm trying to think of the, the best way to articulate this but like what is he doing at central office like what has he done in his career that all of a sudden it makes sense right. that he should be at central office overseeing others um, like, you know, what, what work is he going to be doing now? It seems kind of vague right. to me. And like, why does he want to go do that work? Because he, Listen. he had told me <laughs> right to my face. He was focused on I'm glad you said make, making Deering better. So like, why does he want to go to, to central office? It's not like he's like this, um, math genius who they they plucked to go work on uh you know the finances and, and payroll you know jeff borland who we, who we taught with was, yeah. was so good with computers yep. so they kind of started like pulling him to design some stuff but basically it was like oh, we need more adults in the room and here's one who's high ranking highly educated and yep. goes along with the mission of what we think is the, at the root of the, the challenges in our district yep. and so We'll, we'll put them in there. Um, uh, this is to me, it, it is more of the same. Yeah, and I. That, that's I, actually what he said. Yeah, I, yeah, it's, and it I and I same. thought to myself as I heard all of this, like, who just decided that these this was going to be the shuffling of the of the deck? Is this um, Malia and and Andrew saying we want Abdullahi helping us? Is this Aaron? Uh, uh, sorry. What did I say? You said Andrew. Oh, right. Sorry, Aaron. Are you too impressed? Because um, I read that in the article. Right. Um, Thank you. I sh I, I, maybe I should <laughs> go with superintendents. The superintendents want um, wanted Abdullahi like, helping them out? Or did yeah. the school board chair Lentz say, this is what we as the board have discussed? And like, You know as it, well as I do. This is kind of out of nowhere. It wasn't like there was this advertisement saying, Look. we're going to be looking for interims this, we're going to be looking for interim no. this. I mean, you've got a major reshuffling and restructuring going you on know here. Exactly. Who's in charge? You know exactly why Abdullah is in that position. I'm sorry. He's got, the, listen, he's got a doctorate. He's got the qualifications. I have no problem with him going in there. I wonder, though, uh, Deering has its own challenges, and you had to have two principals over there. Now you're removing one of those principals all of a sudden halfway through the year. Who's going to take that spot? I, like, Who's going to do that work that he was doing over there? If you can just remove somebody from that position all of a sudden, I just don't, I don't see how you can remove him if you needed two principals there. Now he's going to be splitting his time between the – it's just the reason why he's there is, is because of who he is to the community. That's why he fits the narrative. He's very qualified. He's an outstanding human being. I would never say a bad word about him. But were I, there other options that we, I, we could have explored I don't, that uh, were better? To push back a little bit, I don't know how qualified he really is. Well, I mean, by, and, and, by degree, and, and, he's got leadership and all that stuff. And, for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, like, what is it that we are trying to accomplish here? Yeah. So, yep. um, you know, I remember true. when yep. when Sarah Lentz uh, ran... And said that she wanted a superintendent 
from outside the district. Yep. And I thought that it seemed a little short-sighted to be mm -hmm. I, actually i think she she had it written that out of state they wanted someone from out of state like the, there's this notion that we need to go out and recruit right. somebody from somewhere else right i don't know that that's necessarily the best way to get the best no. leader to fit um but what has Abdu dr ahmed done specifically that anyone can point to that says we really need him yep to be working at central office. Yep. And I don't mean that to be critical at all of Dr. Med. I'm just looking at the situation, like the problem that we're trying to fix. What is it that he has done that makes you think like, this is the guy that we need at central office. Right. I get what you're saying. Sheila Jepsen, Sheila Jepsen sure. spent time. She spent, I think a year working at central office under Javier Botana at some point in time. So if you if you were making this argument that like we need to move her to central office because she has this it, like yeah. it just to me like I don't understand the specific rationale that says let's take this person who's working at a school that's not necessarily the best performing school or everything's going so amazing and look at this amazing right. job that they're doing. And again, I'm not criticizing the work he's done there, no, but I, know. I just I, know. I don't see this Oh my God! We have to get this person working at at central office. It's not, you know, in in professional he's, he's sports. Not, he's like, not you, blowing like, the doors right, off, right? Like, right. like it's yeah. like this person is outperforming at the double A level, so we need to get them up to like the the next tier. Or this person is such an amazing coach at the G League. Let's get them on the bench at yeah. the major league, you know, NBA level. So I, I, again, to me, this is you, you, you and I keep saying this. People who are making decisions because they think and they feel like it, it's a good thing to do and i'm in the middle of listening to a, a podcast right now All right and it, it literally is breaking down a fallacy in education about literacy that's been going on for uh, 20 yes, 30 you, years you kind I've, of alluded I've, to I've, that yeah. yeah yeah um and and there's a parallel that that i that i see so the the podcast i'm listening to is called sold a story mm. and uh, it was a woman who had a theory about reading. Uh, she's at, it was in New Zealand and um, came up with a theory on on how to fix reading, and then said, "Now I'm not positive if this is the right way to do it, but this is what I think." We now have scientific evidence that says that uh, no, she was totally wrong, but it sounded and felt so good what she was saying. Right. So many people bought into it. Yeah. If you stake your professional livelihood on a theory as our current school board and uh, superintendent have done. The problem is equity. Everything's about equity. Right. You're not going to change course midway through and say, you know what? We had it wrong. <laughs> I was, yeah. like, like, who's going to self-immolate in that way and say, you know what? I screwed this up real bad. At, like, I'm off track. That is definitely a problem that we have. But it, as you and I have said, it's not necessarily the problem. So... We're, we're doing all this work now at central office and we're still not talking about our reading scores, our math scores, our graduation rate, right. our, our attendance. Right. It, it, so it, it's hard for me to listen to all of this. Yeah. I would, I, if it was me in those, those positions, I would have said, all right, who, which school can sacrifice a leader like a, like a Sheila Jepson during high school was in pretty good shape when she moved up and we had two people that could finish, finish the year qualified people within the building Danny Legage ended up taking over her spot as the assistant principal right when she moved up when I can't remember somebody left it was in the yeah. mi middle of the year and Sheila moved into that spot and uh, it made sense because we were in, we were in good hands we had two people that could fill that role I don't see anybody who's going to step into his role at Deering High School as a principal yeah I don't know the full dynamics I mean my first thought was um They'll, I grab, joke, they'll, they'll, they'll go, to, what's that? You grab somebody that's done the job the, before. Right, yeah. the, um, you know, uh, Jim Moses, who was an assistant sure. principal when you and I yep. were, were teaching there, um, has come out of retirement several times to fill in. Yep. Um, I think there was a, a someone who like was on maternity leave. Yep. Um, so he, he stepped in and finished a year for them. Yep. Um, and it's the current current principal, current co-principal was... At, at Daring. At Daring, yeah. Right. And so, so like, Moses finished the year out. So, at, the, at the end of the day, like, that, I thought that would be what 
It, well, it would make sense. Like, take a person like that, like, go, call Jim and see if he could work at Central Office. Um, I was expecting a call maybe to uh, Jeannie Crocker, who right. had... That was the know, one that came to my mind. I, I yeah. had mentioned that. Like, yeah. get her over at Central Office to... Uh, been there, done that. Hand her a lot of the things that require supervision, but don't have a steep learning curve, and make sure she's there, like, checking off those boxes. Yep. What does having a person mid-year who has no uh, experience at that level stepping into that level well i don't get what it does and so uh, like you and i kind of talk about this we you and i know what teachers do like with their day Mm -hmm. i know what the assistant principals do during the the day they have like a whole list of appointments that are that are set up that they have to facilitate meetings um they have to meet with students who like require discipline etc None of us know what all of the central office people do. Yeah. Yep. Their days are filled with meetings of what? Right. There's some <laughs> right? fluff in there, yeah. I think. Right. And so, yep. it, it, like, it, so we just keep filling that that building on Cumberland Ave. I joke because I, I keep hearing empty that they, offices. They, that's right. They work remotely. <laughs> um, so many of yeah. them. But yeah. like, um, we just keep throwing. Um, hey, let's put it like another person who has some experience at it. Like, yeah. And and what are we getting for all that? And I, I just I don't know. It's a fair point, and it's something that I think the voters um, who are going to shoot down the budget. <laughs> and uh, when do we vote on that? Uh, well, so Malia will put together. No, actually, I shouldn't say that. I'm assuming that she'll put together. Of course, the budget. she will. Yeah. Um, she and and uh, Townsend will will put together the bu- a budget proposal. I think by April they have to get it in front of April. The, is that one of this? I think by April they have to get it to um, city council. city council and have it be like public record, and then in June we we will vote on it as a great. So we get we get six months to to change your mind. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. They they have six months to to decide what they're going to do. I mean we we always talk about how there's not enough money in the budget for education, and there's so much things that they have to cut. Right, and we're hearing rumors that. Uh, Javier is getting some sort of bonus, and that oh, there's Jesus, some sort of I really hope and, that's and that not potentially true. Um, a, a, like a severance, or or he's going to get paid through the end of this year, anyways. And then there's still money to give stipends to uh, the co superintendents who. So each that was are my making... last point. Oh, all right, so. that was my last point. Malia's already making one hundred and forty-two thousand dollars a year. Yeah, if you're living in Portland, making one hundred and forty-two thousand dollars a year, you're you're doing well. You don't need more money. You literally do, you don't need. You're more doing money, well, right? You're doing very well, and they're going to give her. That's more than my household income. Well, right, combined. that's what I'm saying. That so combined two people. So she's a hundred. She's one hundred forty-two thousand. They're going to give her seventeen hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, hundred dollars a month while she's doing this co-principal. They're also going to give Aaron Townsend, who makes one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars a year, one hundred thirty-six, whatever it is. Yep. They're going to give him another seventeen hundred dollars a month as well. And then it would stand to reason that Doctor Ahmed is going to be getting something the, extra. Sure, because it's going to be one hundred. He's doing more, so right. So uh, if that's the case, then then if we're paying those four, that that comes out to just shy of eight hundred thousand dollars that we're going to pay over the span of a very short short time. That that's fat. <laughs> that is fat. Yeah. I know I know people that that are out there that could probably I could get two people. I can think of two people right off the top of my head, me and you, who could walk in there and clean house and look at that budget and say, nope, 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 yeah. nope, yep, nope, yep, don't, and nope, yep. Don't forget the fifty thousand that they spent to lobby for <laughs> right <laughs> legal just, advice on question five, and the fifty thousand oh. dollars that they're paying a search firm to find the next superintendent. If we're so short on money. Where's all this money coming from? Some of it is because we have unfilled positions. True. So, so the there's extra money in the budget because <laughs> we've been trying to hire, you know, substitutes and and they haven't been showing up. Yeah. But on the heels of people not getting paid and the bad audit, and then the, it, it it's it's kind of scary to see yeah. what's going on. So in June, shoot it down. That's what you're saying. Got it. <laughs> no, in so, June, s- approve anything that is going to put more teachers in the classroom. Oh, God. Yeah, if, they, if that, that's the case. Great. If that was the, the budget. I actually might break down the budget 
before that comes in. I think that would be a nice service. Be interesting for us to do, yeah. Just to take, we'll grab Tay Tay Chong, who who's really good at breaking budgets down and sure. his, his gaggle of people and we'll go right through the thing what do you think about doing I, that I, I remember doing that at one point with a, a colleague susan young she was an english teacher and the two of us sat she had done a lot of the work first and then the two of us sat there and we started like literally calling through pages going like wait they're spending they're appropriating money for this they're appropriating money for that and it, it like it sometimes makes your head spin like what is it that they're doing here? yeah right what's the effect of kids if if every single page in that that book of the budget doesn't have a direct correlation to kids getting better. It should be cut out, flat out, just freaking cut out. But anyway, uh, I, I appreciate you making me smarter I, listen, today. I feel like I still I have feel a long refreshed. way to go. But I feel you have a long way to go. You have a lifetime to go, Eli, to make me smarter. It, it, no, actually, I mean, you literally uh, are going to have to get a, like a corkscrew and start winding some knowledge into my ears. I, I have some ideas about. What's that like? Questions that we should be asking <laughs> and things that we should be looking into about school, uh, the, the way our schools are, are yep. managed and run. Um, and and I mean this as a person who wants to see great public schools. Yeah. We're not spending the money on the students. We're spending it on ideas and professionals who are you know, building careers and talking about things that yep. they, they think sound good. And it, we're not getting what's best for our kids. Yep. So. I'd like to find a school that's out there that's doing it well and emulate them. What school is doing it well? What budget looks good? And just make that our budget. Why not do that? Um, if I, listen, I was, well, I've been coaching baseball my whole life. I've been playing baseball my whole life. If I saw somebody that's batting 500 and hitting 40 home runs a year, and then I see another guy who's hitting 100, which is really bad, and he does, he hits ground balls and strikes out a lot, which one do you think I'm going to emulate? Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the guy that's a good hitter, and I'm going to break down his video, and I'm going to look at and try to repeat that in my own body. Yeah, I mean, they try, talk you know. about, like, in sports, the NFL's a copycat league. Like, yeah. whoever wins yeah. the, the Super Bowl this year, everybody's going to kind of try to tool their team to – you know emulate yep. th this model of success for some reason we don't really do that in education I, the the education field is full of people who really mean well but they took something that they struggled with themselves and decided <laughs> the problem w wasn't the 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 them it was the way that they were taught That's so there's right. got to be a different way to it's teach easy, it it's so, easy to like, say that yeah, yeah the, and those and teachers so, sucked i, I you know, really, and, and this is like another story for another whole po podcast, but I've always had a problem with educational like research and, and data mm -hmm. um, in general because no two schools are alike, no two students are alike, no two teachers are alike. Yeah. It's really hard to cookie cut and take something from one place yeah. and apply it to the other. Yeah. And so... Uh, from, our, from a, on the educational side of it, right? on the, on the individual side, right. education like, side, like our district is so different than any other district yeah. in in the state in terms of our our needs. Um, but to your point, like if we could break down how the money gets spent and s try to get this idea that like this is how much money per pupil kind of gets to the classroom. There, there are some formulas where they've tried to do that, but I don't think that anyone's really dialed in the formula right. Definitely not in Portland. I don't trust any formula that comes out of our district. But e even in other districts, like, how do they spend their money? And it would be interesting to see. How many superintendent, like, what's the ratio of superintendent and assistant superintendent to students? That's right, yeah. <laughs> compared to what we have yeah. in, in our district. I just, it brings me back to the ISSN when we had that Nellie Mae money. We had, like, $5 million to spend to do we exactly. Had more than, we had more than that, I think. Right. So we had all this money to go do exactly what we're talking about right now yep. and make our schools that much better. And we came back, we sent loads of teachers on field trips to California to schools that were upper class, you know, white kids in a, in a, you know, 400 student, it was like Casco Bay. It was like a private school publicly funded. And they came back and there, nothing happened. They just reported out and then it was gone. Right. We just spent, we spent millions of dollars and our schools do not look any different. They don't look for any what, what different. So I, I, that's why I say that budget. If I'm, if I'm a voter, 
and I'm happy to do the, the work and hopefully with you and maybe grab Tay, like we said, and, and break down the budget and say, this is fat, this is not fat, and, and take it from a teacher's perspective, get other teachers' point of views on it, and and break that thing down for them and let the public say yeah, yay or nay. Yeah, because nobody asked the teachers. Nobody ever asked the teachers. That never, ever happened in all my 17 years. It was I was never asked about anything budget-wise. It, it, imagine if... And again, like I, I don't want to, I don't want to criticize Doctor Ahmed. Imagine if there was like a, a a Google poll that got sent out to all of the right. the, um, the all of the the teachers, de- all of the de- teachers. De- no, 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 all the teachers in in the district, and it said like, who in your best estimation should go to central office to help clean up the mess and like whoever gets the most votes out of all that like this goes <laughs> th- that's yep. the person that we vote we by, send up yeah, there yeah hired by committee i i love that like right? legit committee not somebody that emily fingdor has uh, right like the teachers have spoken and without question across the district they all say this person needs to go and and speak on behalf like yeah you, the union president is kind of fills that role yeah but they're not really in a position to be able to kind of <laughs> i love this idea i think right? we should we should this podcast should actually start that we could actually have a we could do the poll on our on our face do well, it right here and we'll do it in a in a private way we'll do it in a you know what are the what are the uh you remember the survey monkeys yeah we'll do a survey monkey anonymously and have it sent out to all the teachers have all the teachers give us the feedback on who they think and what they think should be done We'll compile it. I'll make a spreadsheet, Eli. It'll be wonderful. And we'll break it down, and then we'll send it off to Malia and see what Malia and uh, then Harold Townsend, as you call him. <laughs> you, or Andrew. Yeah, whatever I said. Yeah, no. I've never met him. So. Yeah, I can't crap on him. I don't, I don't know him. I, listen, I, our district is a mess right now. Yeah. And I wish for our teachers to be able to focus on learning and proper discipline and i wish for these central office administrators who now are going to step up and take a really difficult job under the circumstances and and hopefully get us through like a a a strong spring nice budget proposal graduations and a new superintendent i wish you would uh uh, run for school board (laughs) i can't and i'm gonna vote for you for mayor (laughs) And uh, you're my hero. Uh, great, great uh, anecdote before before we take off. Uh, this is going to be my parting gift to you. Okay. One of John's friends was over. One of my son's friends was over the house today. And I said, you guys, you know, Eli and I are going are gonna to podcast. Um, I sa- actually didn't say your name. I said, we're going to podcast today. And the kid looked up at me and goes, wait, is Eli Small going to be here today? And I was like, yeah. He goes, do you think you can introduce me? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Are you kidding me? You got to get his autograph. We my, can get his picture. He didn't do a selfie with you, but my legion of fans out there. He was uh, he was very excited because his parents are devoted listeners um, and uh, the Gagnés, and we uh, we love them very much for listening. Well, we, but yes, apparently we they the, like you more. We appreciate the support. But. Yeah, I think it's you know people are are more drawn to smart people than than people that aren't smart. It's my uh, it's my vel- velvety smooth radio. Yeah, voice. I especially like the fact that you're you're the smartest guy in the room anywhere you go, and you wear a Jack Daniels hat. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast. How, how it's it's comfortable in here today. I, the meat locker is feeling good in this balmy fifty degree January I know, I know, weather. I know it's crazy. I uh, you know I, listen. I just. The hat was. I'm a. I'm a man of the people. I know. Yeah. I mean, that's what rich people drink. They drink the <laughs> the, the good stuff. Jack Daniels. <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys listening, and uh, we hope you have an awesome week. And uh, we will be back next week with uh, with more on another topic. And I, I think we were talking about doing some uh, some guest runs. But if you guys want to support us, you can get onto our Patreon page. I will uh, post it. I forgot to do it last time, uh, but I'll do it this time. Um, and uh, that money is going to go directly to teachers and uh, trying to get the word out about this podcast. We're not taking a dime of it because Eli is independently wealthy. Right. Is that is that we, true? No, we're not taking a dime of it was what made me think right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got any parting gifts for us? Uh, speaking of parting gifts, I think we, uh-huh. we gotta, we've got. we talked about this. we got to revisit it. I think we got to go get the T-shirts made T-shirts up. and hats. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I, uh, I think we should... Uh, I think we should give them out to lucky fans too. Uh, lucky, 
I'll be lucky. Uh, unlucky. Um, I think you should get one with a with your Patreon subscription if you kick in at a certain level. It's a great we're, idea. We're, we're, we're working That's on that. That's such a good idea. This is why you're the smart one on the podcast. We'll figure that out. But uh, I'm, I am a uh, you're not a t-shirt guy. I'm a business owner. I am a bit of an entrepreneur. Uh, I know you are. I know entrepreneur. You are. Your business is booming. <laughs> Absolutely booming. Maybe you could get your uh, the the company that does your Brookside um, our swag. Shirts. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll dig into that. Yeah. Brookside Food and Beverage, Brookside Food and Drink. Food and Drink. Food and Drink on uh, Route 302 in Westbrook. If you haven't been there, it's lovely. January 13th, I will be playing totally there. Playing. Yeah, I'll be uh, playing guitar and uh, and howling at the moon. I'll be there with some uh, non-alcoholic beverages. That's right. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> no, I bet that hat is soaked in Jack Daniels. That's how you're getting away with I'm it. sweating it out. <laughs> well, have Take a great it. day, you guys, and uh, thanks for listening. And just, just remember, be nice to each other. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless uh, A sea of the aimless I don't want to be one of the nameless